I bought a two-bedroom house. But it's up to me how many bedrooms there are, though, isn't it? <laughs> On March 30th, 2005, an unfortunate tragedy would forever leave an indelible mark in the world of comedy. Fans were left in shock and disbelief when Mitch Hedberg, the American stand-up comedian known for his deadpan delivery, was found dead in his hotel room. Yet, as the world mourned the early death of the comedy legend, the cause of his death would remain uncertain, leaving fans searching for answers. And soon enough, his fans would learn that behind the laughter lurked a silent struggle with his inner demons. Born on February 24, 1968, in St. Paul, Minnesota, Mitchell Lee Hedberg was known for his iconic delivery and unique comedic style. Coming from a background of Finnish-Swedish, Czech, and German heritage, his ancestry was just as diverse as his humor. However, despite his humor, Mitch struggled at school, and during one of his performances, he humorously recounted how he found school so unengaging that he had barely managed to scrape through. After graduating from high school, convinced it was the perfect place to launch his stand-up career and tired of living in Minnesota, Mitch and his close friend Tim immediately moved to Florida, where he hoped to break through in comedy. But it wasn't all rosy, and to survive, he quickly got a job at Applebee's, where he worked as a cook. He also had no means of transportation, so he would often hitch rides with his landlord, who would drive him from club to club while he struggled to secure gigs and carve out a name for himself in the world of comedy. Despite all these challenges, Mitch kept his eyes firmly on his goals, and soon enough, he developed his unique style of delivery, which was characterized by fantastic one-liners and a laid-back demeanor. Dogs are forever in the push-up position. Uh, that joke is dumb, I'm aware of that. Fans would also begin to recognize him for his trademark sunglasses, making his stage presence even more memorable. And after trying to seek out different audiences, he decided to pack his bags and move to Seattle. Following his move, Mitch didn't stop trying to hone his skills, and in 1996, he finally got his big break when he got an invitation to perform at the prestigious Just for Laughs Montreal International Comedy Festival. Consequently, due to his exceptional performance and growing popularity, Mitch was able to secure a deal with Fox Studio and soon began to make regular appearances on The David Letterman Show. Mitch's style was unique, and the audience loved it. As a result, he was offered more guest spots on late-night shows like Late Night with Conan O'Brien and Howard Stern's radio show. Unfortunately, due to his network's inability to agree on similar creative direction for their project, his deal with Fox didn't pull through. Mitch decided to create an independent feature film called Los Enchiladas, which he wrote, directed, produced, and starred in. However, it wasn't a commercial success, so he decided to place movie making on hold and instead recorded two comedy CDs titled Mitch Altogether and Strategic Grill Locations. Mitch was also known to suffer from stage fright and anxiety when he was performing. It was so bad that he would perform with his eyes closed or while staring at the floor and wearing sunglasses or sometimes stand with his back to the audience. Unlike many comics, however, Mitch never failed to show gratitude to his fans and continued to attract huge crowds through the late 90s and early 2000s who loved to listen to his signature comedy style. And Pringles is a laid-back comedy. They say, F it, cut him up! Just like many comedians and performers, Mitch had a serious drug problem and never really attempted to hide it. His struggles with both alcohol and drugs were hardly a secret, and he would often joke about it. I used to do drugs, I still do, but I used to too. <laughs> During his performances, he always found a way to incorporate drug references along with his personal experiences and observations. Mitch had never really been comfortable with fame, which might be why he was known to mumble through his lines and keep his head down. But his biggest unhealthy coping mechanism was drugs, which only ended up making his struggles worse. Once during a show and clearly intoxicated, he kept falling all over the stage. At one point, the audience could see him lying down behind the curtain, where he told jokes for approximately 10 minutes before rolling back into sight. However, his fans didn't really understand how bad his addictions were until he was arrested in May 2003 for heroin possession in Austin, Texas. He spent some time in jail, and it was while he was locked up that it was revealed that he had a chronic infection in his leg, which he had gotten from his long-term heroin use. Following this revelation, Mitch was sent to the hospital for treatment. While he was at the hospital, he was informed that his only option was to have his leg amputated. This did not sit well with his family, who decided to explore other options, and after meeting with various medical professionals, 
they found some specialists who claimed they could save his leg. Mitch was operated on for 13 hours, during which his surgeons battled to save his leg by removing tissue from his back and transferring it to his legs. After his surgery, he was told that the operation had been successful and that he would not lose his leg. As a result of his arrest and the fear of nearly losing his leg, he decided to take a break from performing for several months. Mitch began to see the negative impact his arrest and drug use was having on his image and began speaking about his desire to limit the amount of drugs he was consuming. He didn't want people focusing on his drug habits if he made a mistake later in life. On March 17, 2005, during an appearance on the Howard Stern Show, when he was asked about his addiction, Mitch told Stern that it was under control. You know, I got the drugs under control now. Do you? <laughs> yeah. Get out of However, the situation was far from under control, and two weeks later, it would all come to a devastating end. Things took a turn for the worse. On March 30, 2005, while he and his wife, Lynn Shawcroft, were traveling between gigs on the East Coast, she walked into his hotel room and saw him slouched over a chair, with his trademark sunglasses still perched on his nose. As she stood and stared at him, she thought it was odd that he hadn't been alerted by her entrance. Her concern quickly turned to panic as she rushed to his side and gently shook him while calling out his name. Yet Mitch was unresponsive. When all her effort proved unsuccessful, she quickly called 911, and he was immediately rushed to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Before we continue, if you want to stay updated with more stories like this, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Mitch was declared dead on March 30, 2005. But his death was not announced until April 1, 2005, which led fans to believe it was an April Fool's Day joke. It wasn't until it was confirmed much later that fans and friends believed that the comic genius was truly dead. At first, everyone believed he had died from heart failure, knowing he was born with a congenital heart defect and experienced chronic heart palpitations and anxiety. But when a post-mortem was carried out, it revealed the opposite, after traces of cocaine and heroin were found in his system. After this great tragedy, a memorial bulletin board was posted on his official website and quickly drew thousands of posts. In many heartfelt posts, some of his fans tearfully revealed that they had felt much closer to him than their own families. His fans weren't the only ones who were heartbroken, and soon, messages and good wishes began pouring in from his friends and colleagues. Mitch had been very popular among his peers and had made a lot of friends in the comedy community. The Minneapolis Star Tribune quoted his close friend and comedian Doug Stanhope from The Man Show, saying he was the greatest comedian ever. Sadly, he was only 37 years old and was nowhere near the peak of his career. But regardless of his untimely demise, his work still continues to influence a large number of comedians. In 2017, he was ranked number 20 in Rolling Stone's list of the 50 best stand-up comedians of all time. Today, he is widely regarded as one of the best comedians of all time. Despite his personal struggles with drugs, Mitch was a man who loved his job. It was one of the ways he was able to fully express himself. He tirelessly dedicated himself to spreading laughter, and his unwavering commitment endured till the very end. Nineteen years after his death, his comedic brilliance continues to resonate with audiences worldwide. From his iconic deliveries to his unforgettable moments, Mitch's contributions to comedy remain unparalleled. Share some of your favorite memories below as we celebrate and remember the remarkable talent and joy he brought into our lives. And if you want to listen to more stories like this, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you in the next video.